If there's one thing that's been consistent in Fire Emblem, it's that the final bosses of the games tend to kick major ass. From the very beginning with the threatening power of Medeus, to attacking and dethroning God with Ashira, to the modern age of cryptid Edelgard, final bosses tend to be pretty cool. However, Aiden from Fire Emblem 6 tends to get a lot of flack for being very easy, which I think it's weird, first of all, because it's not like FE final bosses are always hard. Uh, the Demon King and Fire Dragon, though cool as hell, aren't really gonna scare you, but Aiden in particular gets a really bad rap. It's probably because she's killed by Rory, who is historically the most pathetic lord in the series, so that's an extra sting. But I believe Aiden's weakness to be a very intentional decision by the game. So please, sit back as I walk you through the story gameplay integration of Aiden, the Dark Dragon from Fire Emblem Binding Blade. Also, consider this your spoiler warning. Aiden is the final boss, so obviously there will be huge spoilers for the plot of FE6. And also consider this your warning, that if you don't like, comment, subscribe right now, I will find you, and I will make you feel unsafe. There is no meme. This is just a threat. So, let's just start with the boss fight in question. Aiden is built up as the Dark Dragon, a mysterious shaman in the dark that's been by the main villain Zephiel's side since the start of the game. She's stated to be what Zephiel will use to basically commit genocide on humanity, so naturally, you expect her to be ungodly powerful. But when you get to her, you find that she's... very easy especially compared to all the other bullshit FE6 has thrown at you. She doesn't really hit that hard, she's really slow, and she lacks any way to counter ranged attacks. Simply put, she's not a threat at all. She does have decent bulk, but with the power of dragon slain weaponry that the player has had access to for about two-thirds of the game, even that doesn't matter much. Even on the game's hard mode, considered to be one of the better challenges Effie has, she's still pathetic. So many players felt let down by such a lackluster enemy to finish off the game. But her patheticness is, believe it or not, exactly what she should have according to the lore of the game. Because you see, Aiden's had a real rough go of it. Centuries prior to the game's events, Humans were in a war with the dragons, and the dragons were getting their asses kicked. Your average dragon was much stronger than the average human, but the thing about humans is there's about a fuckzillion of them, and the dragons were being overcome by sheer numbers. So they turned to their leaders, called divine dragons, for help because they wanted to create war dragons, mindless beasts who were created and groomed only to kill. The divine dragons basically went what the fuck is wrong with you people, and fled to a whole other dimension, afraid that the dragons would use their powers without their consent. Unfortunately, one divine dragon, our dear Aiden, was captured before she could flee. She had a moment's hesitation, fearing for the safety of the dragons she was leaving behind, and in a cruel twist of fate, the dragons she was so worried about kidnapped her and fucked her up because they literally destroyed her soul, wiping her mind clean and giving her a single purpose, to create war dragons to kill the humans. And this actually was working for the dragons for a little bit, until the humans got together to create magical weapons designed to wipe out the dragons once and for all. And these weapons did their job perfectly, being so magically strong that they caused climate change. I'm not even kidding with you, that is exactly what happens in the lore. And it forces the remaining dragons to either flee or die. And when the humans finally get to the Dark Dragon, she's just... sitting there. With her soul destroyed, she had only one reason to live. The orders of her master, the leader of the dragons. Well, since the humans made sure he was fucking dead, she no longer had a reason to live. So she just sat there passively, only fighting back when the humans showed the intent to kill her. Seeing this, Hartmut, the leader of the humans, spared her life, locking her away instead of killing her, likely out of a feeling of pity. 
So, flash forward to the events of the game, and Aiden is awoken by Zephiel, who tasks her with helping him end humanity and restore the reign of the dragons. Given a new master, she again has purpose in life, and continues to create war dragons and fight for Zephiel's will. And when Zephiel is eventually killed, he entrusts her with his never-ending dream, giving her the task to conquer the world even after his death. And so, she sits and gathers her power, and it is there that Roy finds her, and beats her ass to send her away to Arcadia with other people and dragons. So how, you may ask, does anything that I just say have to do with how easy her boss was? Simple. She's a puppet without a puppeteer. Aiden lost her identity. The woman who was kind enough to show sympathy for the people that sought to use her was gone. In its place, an empty husk that could easily be controlled was left, and she existed only for the service of others. And with Zephiel's death, she lost her master and had to act on her own. But there was no own to act on, as there was no Aiden anymore. At least, not as she once was. Someone fighting for a cause they don't believe in, because they don't have the ability to believe in anything, will never be as strong as someone fighting for something they love and have passion for. Rory is significantly weaker than her, but because he has passion, he fights greater than the sum of his parts. And since Aiden has no drive, she fights far weaker than the sum of her parts. Take that disparity, and it's no wonder Aiden is so easy. It was never a battle of strength, it was a battle of will. And willpower is something that Roy possesses in spades. It's perhaps his greatest strength. Defeating Aiden was never about killing her. It was about helping her be Aiden again. It was about taking a puppet without a puppeteer and, rather than just give it a new master, it's to burn the strings that bound her to ashes. Her fight perfectly reflects the emptiness within her. It's most similar to Gwyn from Dark Souls. You aren't fighting a sane, normal person. You're fighting the husk of something that was once great. And so, that's why I feel Aiden is a perfect boss for who she is. Her weakness in the face of Roy is meant to be a testament to the will of man and the power of love, something Effie has always kind of been preaching since the 1990s. I can understand feeling disappointed at a weak final battle, but I think if you look at it from a character standpoint, you'll find she's the perfect conclusion to the story of Fire Emblem 6. She also has a perfect excuse to be pathetic, unlike fucking Veld. 80 HP and he still gets one-rounded by an angry dad. <laughs>